Hello, I'm Miss Ginsburg with No Adam, and today we're going to be reading Matter and Energy. This is a student reader in Unit 1. Science in Space, Experimenting in Space. Astronauts from around the world live together in a moving science laboratory far above Earth. This lab orbits 386 kilometers or 240 miles above Earth. It is called the International Space Station. Scientists on the space station are busy conducting different experiments. For example, scientists have sent 18 zebrafish into space. They wanna see whether the muscles of the fish get weaker compared to on Earth. This research is important because astronauts lose muscle mass in space. The zebrafish in space experiment will help scientists understand why and how this happens. The stem cycle. The experiments on the space station are part of science. Science is all knowledge learned from experiments. Science is the search for explanations about the natural world. Scientists look for the causes of what they observe in the world around them. Scientists use evidence to form conclusions that support those explanations. Science is part of a larger cycle that includes engineering, math, and technology. This is called the STEM cycle. Engineers apply specific knowledge to create new technologies that solve problems. Math is a tool that both scientists and engineers use to capture results and communicate those results to others. Following a scientific process. Scientists use a scientific process to guide them as they try to answer questions about the world around them. This process helps scientists go from a question to a data-based conclusion. Scientists always begin with a question. The question helps scientists figure out exactly what they are trying to find out. Scientists studying the zebrafish have a question they are trying to answer. How does living in space affect a zebrafish's muscles? Every year, the amount of scientific knowledge grows. Scientists use this existing body of knowledge to research their question. For example, scientists need to know that zebrafish are a kind of fish that live in fresh water. They also need to know that kind of food zebrafish need to survive. What kind of food zebrafish need to survive? So here it shows that scientists are studying zebrafish in an aquarium on the International Space Station. After scientists have researched their question, they form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is a statement that can be proved true or false. An example of a hypothesis is, living in space causes zebrafish to lose muscle mass. Another hypothesis would be, living in space has no effect on the muscle mass of zebrafish. Scientists then write a summary of the experiment they will conduct to test their hypothesis. The summary should include the basics of the data to be collected, the variables that will be tested, and the parts of the experiment that will remain constant in each test or trial. Scientists will then list materials needed and the procedure they will follow. A procedure is like a step-by-step -step recipe for the experiment. A good procedure will let someone else repeat the experiment exactly. Scientists also draw a scientific diagram. They do this so anyone can use the same materials and follow the same steps to get their similar results. They also want to create a record of their thinking. Scientists then conduct an experiment. An experiment is a procedure designed to test whether a hypothesis is true, false, or inconclusive. Inconclusive results do not confirm or deny the hypothesis. As scientists conduct experiments, they gather data. Data are numbers and observations gathered from an experiment. Scientists use different tools for gathering data. The zebrafish experiment is one of many experiments taking place on the International Space Station. It seeks to prove or disprove the hypothesis that living in space causes zebrafish to lose muscle mass. Scientists use experiments to look for patterns in data. A pattern is something that happens in a regular and repeated way. A pattern sometimes shows a cause and effect relationship where one event or thing is the result of the other. 
in order to discover a cause and effect relationship. Scientists design experiments in a way that shows how changes to one thing cause something else to change in a predictable way. Scientists do this, do this in a very specific way with variables and constants. A variable is something you change. One kind of experiment is a controlled experiment. In a controlled experiment, there is usually one variable being tested. After data have been collected, scientists form a conclusion. The conclusion uses data from the experiment to explain why the hypothesis is true, false, or inconclusive. Scientists are just beginning to experiment with zebrafish in space. They have not yet gathered enough data to come up with a conclusion. How to use the scientific process. Step one, question. End with a question mark and do not include words such as I or because. Step two, research. Include a minimum of three facts relevant to the question. Step three, hypothesis. Write a concise statement that answers the question and can be proved true or false. Step four, summarize experiment. Describe in two or three sentences the experiment you will do to test whether your hypothesis is true or false. Identify the variables, constants, and controls of the experiment. The variables of the experiment are changes being tested. The constants in the experiment are conditions unchanged during each test or trial. A control in the experiment captures the effect of unknown variables. Step five, materials and procedure. Vertically list all materials needed for your experiment with quantities. Next, vertically list the numbered steps of your procedure. Note safety precautions. Step six, scientific diagram. Draw a diagram of the experiment set up that is at least the size of your hand. Title it and include labels for all materials on the materials list. Step seven, data. Follow your test procedure and gather data, both observations and numbers, to determine whether the hypothesis is true, false, or inconclusive. Use proper units, tidy daddle tables, and tape into lab notebook. Step eight, conclusion. Use the data collected in the experiment to explain why the hypothesis is true, false, or inconclusive. Every conclusion must contain a minimum of three elements. One, restate your hypothesis. Two, make a claim, true, false, or inconclusive. Three, use key points of data as evidence to support and explain your claim. Matter in space. Whether in space or on Earth, all matter shares certain characteristics. Matter is everything that has mass and takes up space. Both non-living things and living things are made up of matter. Even though atoms make up both living and non-living things, atoms are not alive. The space station is matter. The zebrafish are matter, as is the water they live in. Astronauts are also matter. All matter is made up of tiny parts that are too small to be seen. These parts are called atoms. An atom is the smallest piece of matter that has the properties of an element. An element is a substance entirely made up of one kind of atom. Oxygen is an element. Hydrogen is another element. There are 118 different kinds of elements. Elements have unique properties because of the kinds of atoms that make them up. So here it's showing us that the elements oxygen and hydrogen atoms make up water. Many billions of atoms make up even a single grain of sand. For example, think about a grapefruit. If each atom in the grapefruit were the size of a blueberry, the grapefruit would have to be the size of Earth. There are so many atoms in just one grapefruit that they are impossible to count. Imagine having to fill up the entire planet with blueberries. That's about how many atoms are in one grapefruit. Atoms themselves are made up of smaller particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. These smaller particles are much smaller than the atom itself. Because atoms are so tiny, scientists use scale to better understand the size of an atom, its smaller parts, and how it relates to everyday substances. Scale is the size, extent, or importance, or magnitude, of something relative to something else. For example, the protons and neutrons group together in the atom's core. 
The core is called the nucleus. If the atom is the size of a blueberry and you open the blueberry up, the nucleus would be too small to see. If you were to make the blueberry the size of a football field, you would just be able to see the nucleus. It would be the size of a small marble. The electrons are much smaller than the protons and neutrons. They are in constant motion around the nucleus. However, most of the atom is filled with empty space. There are huge amounts of space between each of the electrons and between the electrons and the nucleus. Properties of matter. Atoms are like Lego pieces. They can join together in different ways. The different ways that atoms join together make all of the matter in the universe. Two or more atoms joined together are called a molecule. Water is an example of a molecule. It is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Matter has different properties depending on the number and kind of atoms that make it up. A property is an observable or measurable characteristic of matter. For example, water's properties are a result of how the hydrogen and oxygen atoms join together. Scientists are interested in a substance's properties because properties can help scientists identify different kinds of matter. Properties include texture, flexibility, color, state of matter, and odor. For example, water can be a solid, ice, liquid, or gas, water vapor. It is colorless and odorless. Measuring matter. Measurements are an important part of science. Scientists use the metric system, which communicates measurements of mass or distance in units such as grams and meters. Mass is a measurable property of matter. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter that makes up an object. Mass is measured in grams. Mass increases as the number and size of atoms increase in an object. Volume is another measurable property of matter. Volume is a measure of how much space an object or substance takes up. Matter exists in three dimensions, so both mass and volume are needed to accurately describe matter. Identifying properties of matter. Property, color, what it is, how matter reflects or absorbs light. Observable or measurable, it's observable. Mass, a measure of the amount of matter that makes up an object. Measurable in grams or kilograms with a scale. Shape, the form of an object. It's observable. State of matter, the different forms of matter depending on the amount of heat present. It's observable. Temperature a measure of how fast molecules are moving. It's measurable in degrees Celsius with a thermometer. Texture, the feel of a substance. It's observable. Volume, a measure of how much space an object or substance takes up. It's measurable in cubic meters for solids with a ruler, liters or milliliters for liquids. Forces in space, running in space. Sunita Williams is an astronaut who has lived on the International Space Station. She was the first person to run the Boston Marathon from space. It took her four hours, 23 minutes, and 10 seconds to run the 42 kilometers, or 26.2 miles. There are some challenges to running in space. One challenge is that there is much less gravity on the space station than there is on Earth. Gravity is a force of attraction between all matter. On Earth, the force of gravity pulls all objects near Earth's surface downward. A force is a push or pull that acts on an object, changing its speed, direction, or shape. Earth's gravity keeps you from floating off into space. It is also why things thrown in the air fall back to the ground. In the space station, there is much less gravity than on Earth. As a result, Sunita had to attach herself to the treadmill with a bungee with bungee cords. Without the bungee cords, she would float. Mass versus weight. All matter has gravity, even the matter that makes up people. 
The reason a person doesn't noticeably attract nearby objects is because more massive objects have more gravity. Earth's gravity pulls on all objects on or near Earth's surface because Earth is so ma massive. The gravitational force exerted on an object by a planet or moon is called weight. It is measured in newtons. Here on Earth, weight is calculated by multiplying the object's mass by the force of Earth's gravity. The pull of gravity is nearly identical everywhere on Earth. Non-scientists often think that an object's weight is the same as its mass. The two are related because an object's weight depends on its mass. However, weight also depends on the force of gravity. When astronauts travel to the moon, their mass doesn't change, but their weight does. This is because the moon is much less massive than Earth is. As a result, its gravitational force isn't as strong as Earth's. Forces cause movement. When you stand on Earth's surface, gravity pulls you down toward the center of Earth. In reaction, the ground has its own force that pushes back up with the same amount of force. This keeps you from sinking into the ground. When the forces acting on an object are equal, they are balanced. If the ground did not push back with the same amount of force, you would fall into the ground. In this case, the forces would be unbalanced. Gravity would pull you down with a greater force than the force of the ground pushing back up. When all of the forces acting on an object are balanced, the object will not change its motion. If you want to move, there has to be an unbalanced force acting on you. This is because all events, including motion, require a cause. Unbalanced forces cause motion. So when the boy pushes his sister, he provides an unbalanced force, and this causes the swing to move. As Sunita ran the marathon, she and everyone else on the space station traveled around Earth twice. This is because the International Space Station is in constant motion around Earth. The space station orbits Earth once every 90 minutes. To orbit means to travel in a circle around an object. The space station orbits Earth because Earth's gravity pulls on it. This pull provides an unbalanced force that causes the space station to move. Gravity is the force that causes all movement in the solar system. The strength of gravity pull, gravity's pull depends on the mass of the object and the distance between them. For example, the sun is the most massive object in our solar system. More than one million Earths could fit inside the sun. Because of its mass, the sun's gravity pulls on Earth, keeping it in orbit around it. It takes Earth about 365 days to orbit the sun, one Earth year. There are billions of stars in the universe just as massive as our sun. However, these stars are very far away from our solar system. This is why we don't feel their gravity. Our sun seems so large and bright to us because it is so much closer to Earth than any other star. Patterns in space. Even though the sun is much closer than any other star, it is still very far away. This is why Earth's gravity holds you on Earth. The pull of Earth's gravity also keeps the space station and our moon in orbit around it. The moon takes about 29.5 days to orbit Earth. This equals one Earth month. These predictable motions cause patterns that we can see from Earth. Astronauts can also see patterns from space. For example, as the space station orbits Earth every 90 minutes, astronauts see the sun rise and set about 15 times every day. In contrast, here on Earth, we see the sun rise once in the morning and once at night. This happens because Earth rotates on an imaginary line that goes from the North Pole to the South Pole. This imaginary line is called an axis. As Earth rotates, Part of the planet gets light and then dark. The sun always shines, but its light only hits one half of Earth at a time. This is why we have day and night, as well as sunrises and sunsets. Low gravity in space. Even though Earth's gravity keeps the space station in orbit, there's much less gravity on the space station than on Earth. Low gravity explains why astronauts lose muscle mass when they are on the International Space Station. On Earth, we have to use our muscles 
just to stand up against the downward pull of gravity. This requires our bodies to maintain enough muscle to support our own weight. In the low gravity environment of space, astronauts lose muscle since it is not required to support their weight. To counter this, astronauts have to exercise regularly. Sunita trains at least four times each week for months to prepare for the marathon. Earth's place in the solar system. There are eight known planets in our solar system. A solar system is a collection of planets and other objects that orbit a star. Each planet has unique properties. Mercury is the relative size of a green pea. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. It is gray. It is very hot because it gets so much sunlight. Venus is the relative size of a nickel. Venus is covered in thick yellow clouds. Venus is the hottest planet because the clouds trap the sun's heat. Earth is the relative size of a nickel. Earth is the third planet from the sun. It is green and brown from the land and blue from the oceans. It has water and air. It is the only planet we know of that has living things on it. Mars, the relative size of a vitamin tablet. Mars has a red rocky surface. Humans have sent machines to Mars to look for signs of life. No signs of life have been discovered yet. Jupiter is the relative size of a basketball. Jupiter is the largest planet. It has stripes of gray, pink, brown, yellow, orange, and red. It has clouds and rings of dust. It also has a big red spot. This spot is a giant storm. Saturn is the relative size of a basketball. Saturn is nearly as large as Jupiter, but it is much less massive. It is yellow. It has large rings made of ice, rock, and dust. Uranus, it's the relative size of a baseball. Uranus is a blue-green color. It is very cold. It is about the same size as Neptune. And Neptune, it's relative size of a baseball. Neptune is blue and green. It has thin rings. It has a dark purple spot. The spot is a giant storm. So the size of planet relative to the sun means relative size if you were as tall as a typical front door. Space collisions, moving space debris. One particular challenge to the International Space Station is space debris. More than 500,000 pieces of space debris orbit Earth. The most common space debris orbit, orbiting Earth comes from human-made sources, including old spacecraft that are no longer in use. Space debris poses a challenge to the International Space Station because in space, objects move with a large amount of speed. Speed is the rate at which an object covers distance in a period of time. It is measured in meters per second. Most debris travels at speeds of up to 28,164 kilometers or 17,500 miles per hour. At those speeds, even tiny paint flecks can damage structures. This is because moving objects have energy. The faster an object is moving, the more energy it has. Energy changes matter. Energy is the ability to do work. Work is any change in position, speed, or state of matter due to force. Unlike matter, energy is not made up of atoms. However, matter and energy are constantly interacting. Matter can only change when enough energy is present. Energy is always either being stored or doing work. Energy that is being stored is called potential energy. There are different forms of energy. For example, all matter has a form of potential energy called chemical energy. This energy is stored in the bonds that hold atoms and molecules together. Sorry, that's my dog barking. <laughs> the reason we eat food is because food contains chemical energy. Our bodies need that chemical energy to survive. Energy of motion is called kinetic energy. The more kinetic energy something has, the more work it can do. For example, all moving objects have kinetic energy. Energy can change from one form to another in an energy system. 
A system is a set of connected, interacting parts that form a more complex whole. You are an energy system. When you eat food, you absorb that food's chemical energy. Your body changes some of that chemical energy into kinetic energy when you run, ride a bike, or turn a page of a book. Your body also stores some of the chemical energy so can it, it can be used later. Transferring energy. Energy can also be transferred from one object or system to another. When energy is transferred, it moves into or out of an object system. Whenever two objects come into contact with one another, they exert a force on each other for a short period of time. This is called collision. The reason that even tiny paint flecks can damage the International Space Station is that when two objects collide, the force of that collision causes energy to transfer from one object to another. When a moving object hits another object, the force of the collision transfers energy into the second object. Some energy is also changed into other forms of energy, such as sound. This is why collisions often make loud noises. The force can also transfer energy that changes the object's motion. Energy can also transfer out of a moving object. For example, friction transfers energy out of a system. Friction is a force that slows motion whenever two objects rub against each other. Friction slows motion because it causes some of the energy of the moving object to change into heat. Friction is why your hands feel hot after you rub them together. Your moving hands form a system, and they both have kinetic energy. The heat is a sign that some kinetic energy has transferred out of the system. It's important to point out that energy didn't disappear. Instead, it transferred out of the system. This is because energy is never created or destroyed. Now think of the International Space Station, forming a system with a moving paint fleck. If that paint fleck hits the space station, the force of the collision transfers some of the kinetic energy to the space station. This transfer of kinetic energy is what causes damage. The energy can change the position of matter. For example, it can dent the windows. Some of the energy is also transferred out of the system and changed into sound energy. If a more massive piece of space debris were to collide with the space station, it would cause more damage than a paint fleck. This is because a more massive object moving at a certain speed has more kinetic energy than a less massive object moving at the same speed. As a result, the massive object will apply a greater force in a collision, transferring more kinetic energy to the space station. However, the total amount of energy of the system, which is made up of the two interacting objects, the International Space Station and the space debris, will remain the same because energy is never created or destroyed. Wow, I learned a lot reading matter and energy. I hope that you did too. I'll see you tomorrow with another one. Bye.